Well, good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in two weeks. Did you miss me? Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Let me tell you, we are blessed at Countryside to have so many amazing pastors. I'm so grateful for Pastor Tim, Pastor Kelly, Pastor Marcelo. Last week, Pastor Andrew gave a great word, didn't he? Wasn't that powerful? This week, I will be attending my 38th camp at Countryside. So if anybody looks at me and go, man, that guy's weird. You go to 38 camps, it does something to you. But let me tell you, I believe in the next generation. I was a youth pastor here for 20 years. I believe that God's very best for the next generation is right now. There is a revival spirit that's happening in our youth group that I have never seen in all these years. God's doing some great things. So please, this week, pray for our youth, pray for our youth pastors, and pray that I survive my 38th camp at Countryside. So the last two weeks, I've had the privilege of going to a Convoy of Hope conference. Um, so I, this is hard. You know, sometimes pastors are hard. They're, they're asked to do difficult things. And so I joined about 225 other pastors of some of the largest churches in America. They all came together in Rome, Italy. And no, I know. It's hard. What we did is um, we went to, Andy Stanley was our guest speaker. For those that don't know, Matt Redman, one of the top worship leaders in, a, in the world, was our guest worship leader. And they brought us to go over all that Convoy of Hope does around the world. I'm going to share a little bit of that, that later in today's message. And they took us on a 11-day cruise in the European. So, in, the, in Europe, I, I know, I don't even know how to say it right, but um, it was difficult. Um, we had a lot of good food. There's nothing bad to eat in Italy. We had a blessed time. I thought of you while I was gone at least two times, okay? <laughs> but let me tell you, what a wonderful time it was to experience some of the great things around the world provided by Convoy of Hope, one of the greatest ministries that we partner with. We're one of their largest donating, donating churches. And so, Countryside, what you are doing in partnership with Convoy of Hope is nothing short of miraculous, and we are with good people. And so I'm gonna share a little bit later about all of that, but right now, we are in week two of a series called The Holy Spirit. Pastor Andrew, like I said, he did an amazing job. Elaine and I, actually, we were on a, one of our bus rides, it was a two hour ride to one of those, it, it was a difficult two hours on that ride. I know you, a lot of you are feeling bad for me with my trip, but. We were listening, got our ears together, listening. It was a powerful introduction on the Holy Spirit. Something that's so important for us to know and you to know is the Holy Spirit is not weird. It's gotten a bad reputation where people are like, oh, Holy Spirit, okay, oh, wow, something weird's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen. It's gonna get out of order. It's gonna be out of control. Listen, the Holy Spirit is not creepy, He's not weird, he's always in order, he's always right on time, he's always good. He was the gift that Jesus gave us before he ascended to heaven. He said, I got something so great for you. I'm giving you the Holy Spirit that is now going to dwell inside of you. And because of that Holy Spirit that dwells inside of you, there is so much that is gonna come to your benefit. But you see, so many believers, they haven't tapped into the power of the Holy Spirit and all that the Holy Spirit means. So Pastor, Inter Pastor Andrew introduced some of the aspects that the Holy Spirit does in our life. He comforts us. He's a comforter. When you feel alone or you're going through a difficult time or you're going through times of tragedy or loss, the Holy Spirit is right beside you to encourage your heart. You're not alone. The Holy Spirit counsels you. You know, when we have times of need and we don't know what to do, oftentimes we don't slow down to listen to that still, small voice that is giving us counsel on what to do, how to do it, which door to walk through. We're too busy trying to knock down the door that the Holy Spirit is saying, you do not want to go through that door. 
But that's a gift that the Holy Spirit offers us as a counselor. He convicts us. You know when you do something that is sin or something that you know and you feel that in your heart like, ah, that conviction? That's the Holy Spirit that's inside of you that's showing you and directing you and leading you because the Holy Spirit loves you. The Holy Spirit wants the very best for each one of us as Christ followers, but we have to tap in to the Holy Spirit inside of us. Don't be weirded out by the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. It's a gift from God. There's people in your life, people in this church. I can look around and see some people in this church, and they're always joyful. Some of the people, be honest, some I see, and they're not joyful hardly at ever. But there's some that are always joyful. They're always encouraging. They're always uplifting. No matter what's happening in their life, for some reason, they still are walking in peace. Now, I wonder why that is. It's because they're demonstrating the gift of the Holy Spirit and walking hand in hand in a spirit-filled life. We live in a world that says just do it in your own strength. Do it in your own power. And when we do it in our own strength and our own power, I wanna promise you this. We will fail almost every single time. But when we're walking hand in hand with the Holy Spirit and listening to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit, we begin to realize there is a power that God has given each and every one of us as overcomers to lead us, to guide us, to anoint us. You see, we make a choice every single day. Am I gonna walk in the Spirit and am I gonna walk in the way of the world? The reality is that there are more people that are surrendered to the world than they are the Spirit. You want change in your life, receive that free gift, tap into that free gift, tap into what God left us and all the things that the Holy Spirit has to offer us. You see, as Christians, there's a better way. So many people, they just, one foot in, one foot out, they're trying to do it in their own flesh and they're wondering why is this Christian walk so difficult? Why that is, is because oftentimes we're not tapped into the Holy Spirit and the power that the Holy Spirit offers. It's a gift. Now let me give you a quick illustration. Probably about 10 years ago, we did something that was called Serve Day. Serve Day is we would have hundreds of people from our church and we would go to all these different locations of single parents, widows, those that were struggling, those that had broken down houses. And my team, there's about a team of 12 of us that had a house of a widow. It was so exciting to be able to help. It was overgrown. The trees were overgrown. The plants were overgrown. It was growing up on the house. And we looked at that and I'm like, man, I am fired up. I'm ready to go. Now let me explain something to you as your pastor. I'm not a manual labor kind of guy. I know you look at me and you think, man, that's a lumberjack looking guy right there. I know, I know. Elaine loves that part of me. But in all reality, I have pastoral hands. They are, these are like praying hands. You know, have you ever seen the praying hand statue? Go look at it, it's really soft. It's, 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 it's not callous at all. In fact, I took a picture of my hands. Take a look at these hands. Those are pastoral hands, okay? Okay, you can take my soft pastoral hands down. So I go, I'm fired up. Immediately I'm taking an ax, I'm chopping on wood, I'm raking stuff. Two hours later, I'm, I'm sweating like a hog and I look down at my beautiful, soft, pastoral praying hands. And they look something like this. I'm like, no! Will my hands ever grow back? Will they ever be those pastoral hands that I treasure? And then someone walks up to me and they say, Pastor, you know there's a better way. And they hand me this. How much greater is the better way of the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit in our life? It's a gift. So often we're trying to figure it all out on our own and we stumble, we fall, we struggle, but there is a power far greater than work gloves on pastoral hands. 
as a believer in Jesus Christ, as a Christ follower, walking in the power that the Holy Spirit offers every single believer is a gift that we have that God has given to us. Let's look at Acts chapter one today, starting in verse four. Now, give me the, I wanna give you the context. This is Jesus had already died on the cross. He was raised from the dead, and just before he ascended to heaven, he met with the disciples, and they, he gave them this. Verse four, on one occasion, while Jesus was eating with them, he gave them this command. Don't leave Jerusalem. But wait for the gift my Father has promised. The gift that my Father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John was baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. He's saying, don't worry, I'm ascending, I'll be gone for a while, but something so great is what I'm going to leave you that is a gift from the Father. The word, the Greek word baptism is baptismo. It means to immerse. It means to submerge. It means to be submerged into the power of the Holy Spirit in every area of our life. Verse eight says, but you will receive power. Everyone say power. You see, so many Christians are walking around, they're so weak. They're so weak, they're so fearful. They're almost ashamed of what, of being a Christian. And we sometimes become undercover Christians. Listen, we will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you, this is all of us. How many Christ followers are in here? Is it, oh, 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 oh. Well, here we go. Well, this is for you. This message is for you. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and at the ends of the wor world. Power, power. The word power comes from the Greek word dunamis, which is derived from the word dynamite. That's where we receive that word dynamite. It means a force, a miraculous power, an explosive power from God. Look at me. Inside of each one of you is the Holy Spirit. Inside of each one of you, there is an explosive power to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Inside of each one of you, the power of God is ready to blow up and change this world forever. Can you say amen? amen. See, you will be empowered to take my message around the world. Not through your own ability, but through the power of the Holy Spirit that's gonna lead you, that's gonna guide you, that's going to empower you. You see, Jesus is talking here to the disciples. For the last three years, we've seen in our studies, the disciples didn't always get it right. In the most important times, oftentimes they fell asleep. There were times they had the wrong answer. There were times they did the wrong things. But Jesus chose them as his disciples. And after Jesus rose from the dead, many of them didn't even have faith that it was him. The disciples oftentimes have such little faith. Peter, Peter denied him three times. At the cross, the apostle John, he was the only one that showed up while everyone else was in hiding. When Jesus rose, where were they? They were hiding in a room from Jewish authorities. Thomas, filled with doubts, was telling the other disciples, Oh, I doubt it, I doubt it, I don't believe it. And then Jesus walks in, and he's like, oh my goodness, Jesus. And Jesus is like, hey, Thomas, go ahead, put your hands on my side, it's me. Jesus talking to these men, these men that were ordinary guys that was called to do extraordinary things, to preach his word, to change a lost and a dying world with the message of Jesus Christ. He was telling them, you have, you, and I'm telling you, 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 have the power to take this message to your world. So often, often we look at other people and say, well, they can do it, they can do it, they can do it. Listen to me, the power of the Holy Spirit is inside of all of us that call ourselves followers of Jesus Christ. Gave them the power to take this message around the world. Here we are, Sunday morning, 
During the summer, it's, it's, it's a hot summer. Woo! It's hot. But I look around and I, I see during worship, people are worshiping God as their Father, their Lord. I look at this church and I think, God's up to something special at Countryside. God's doing some amazing things. God's, see, to see over 200 people recently baptized at Clearwater Beach, God's up to something great. And what he's doing is he does what Jesus does. He uses ordinary, how many ordinary people are there in here? <laughs> he uses just ordinary people. He didn't go and say, you know what? You know what, you smell like fish. I'm not gonna use you. you. You smell like this. Oh, you're a tax collector? You know what, you get in the back of the line. No, he goes, I'm using you. I'm using you. He wants to use each one of us. Ordinary people called by God to do extraordinary things because of the power of the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of us. That power is available to every single person in this room watching online today. But it's up to us individually to tap into the Holy Spirit in our life. Next week, we're gonna talk about spiritual gifts. I mean, like gifts. I love gifts. Now, I get weary, you know, sometimes when I'm opening that I'm gonna get a paper cut on my my hands, you know, my, my soft pastoral hands. I love gifts. But next week we're going to talk about what the gifts of the Spirit are and how we operate as a church in those gifts. But this week, I want to talk with you about four things that the Holy Spirit wants to give all believers. The Holy Spirit gives you the power, number one, to share Christ boldly. Everyone say boldly. Boldly. Paul says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse 4. He says, My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but God's power. Paul's saying to them, It's nothing special about me. I'm not the greatest speaker. I'm, it's not about who I am. It's not about how eloquent I am. But I'm here as an obedient vessel before God. And because of the Holy Spirit inside of me, what comes out changes people's lives because it's the power of the word being infused by the power of the Holy Spirit. Do you ever feel sometimes that you're unworthy to share? Do you ever feel like you're not qualified to share? How could God use me with my past? How could God use me with what I've done? How could God use me? I'm an introvert. I'm shy. I can't. I can't. See, that's exactly what the enemy wants you to believe. The, the enemy wants to see you paralyzed in a corner and non-effective as a witness of Jesus Christ. But you see, God wants to use all of us. He wants to use all of us. For Many of you know my story. I was an introverted, shy, overweight child that just said yes to Jesus. I started working in the four or five year old ministries and I was so shy that I was a clown. I put makeup on so I could hide behind the makeup with kids. I stumbled on my words. I didn't know what I was doing. But what I did know is that I was gonna be obedient in the small things and I was gonna trust God and the power of the Holy Spirit to take me to the next level and to the next place. So did I feel unqualified? Listen, in 2010, when I took over this church, I took over for one of the most incredible pastors in the nation, anointed, gift, a zealot for God. The, the way he would preach and give altar calls, it, it was like, I'm up there after, on the first Sunday, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, the shadow that was cast by our founding pastor, I'm like, oh my gosh, Jesus love you, uh, uh. Well, you see, I was obedient just like God's calling each one of us to be obedient in this room. It wasn't that I was so great, but it's that God is so great in me. And when you see me up here boldly proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, boldly preaching the word Sunday in and Sunday out, seeing a church that's growing and thriving because we're all coming together with the same call and the same purpose, it's not because of me and my abilities, but it's because of the power of the Holy Spirit that's inside of me to preach the word of God boldly. The second thing with the power of the Holy Spirit, why does he give us that power? He gives it for us, number two, when you're weak. Do you ever feel weak? Do you ever feel weary? 
Do you ever feel overwhelmed? Do you ever feel like you're doing this all on your own? Do you ever feel like I can't take another thing? Why is it always bad news? Hear me. Romans chapter eight, verse 26, it says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. When you're feeling weak, know that the Spirit of God dwells inside of you as your helper when you feel overwhelmed, when you feel weak, when you feel unable to keep moving forward, you've got to tap into that. Get alone with God, listen to the still small voice, and begin to walk as an overcomer instead of someone that's walking in fear and doubt and in weakness. We do not know what that we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. Sometimes we don't even know what to pray. But when we're seeking God and we're praying and the Holy Spirit's with, the Holy Spirit's gonna give you the things that we need to pray for. The Holy Spirit is going to intercede on our behalf to the Father. It's not about us. It's all about him because the Holy Spirit has got our back. When you're weak, he's strong. When you're going through difficult times, know that you have the Holy Spirit that's always got your back. How many people work out in here? I'll put my hand down. Well, my son gave me this illustration this week because Pastor Andrew is big into working out. And when, when someone's working out and they say, today I'm going to max out, man, I'm going all in, and they begin to bench, they have something there with them because they don't want to get hurt, and that is called the spotter. A spotter is someone, when someone's on the bench and the bench press is going up, the spotter's got his hands on there to make sure that that bar is not going to crush his neck or break something. And so the, the spotter's, Helping, okay, Andrew, let's go. One, got it. He's strong. Four, five, six, seven, eight. He's got to get to 10. You know what the spotter's doing? I got you, man. Come on, push it, push it. You can do this. And oftentimes, the spotter is literally taking all of the weight so that the person lifting the weights feels good about themselves. How much greater is our Holy Ghost spotter that's got us when we're weak and we feel overwhelmed and we feel like we can't do it? The Holy Spirit's saying, come on, you got this. You can do this. You see, so many people, they get caught up in their lives, their past, their sins, their addictions, their childhood wounds. They struggle with self-control. They struggle in their jobs to be a witness. They struggle as parents. You know what all that is? That's all living in the world. We all have those times of struggle. But understand this, in those times of struggle, the Holy Spirit is with you. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 9. It says, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Let me tell you, every single week I think, oh my goodness, I gotta get up and preach again. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Those areas in your life that you feel like I can't do it, let me tell you, you can do it with the power of the Holy Spirit that is resting inside of you. Because when you are weak, then you are strong. But it's up to you to recognize your weakness and allow the Holy Spirit to be that strength when you're weak. The Holy Spirit will give you power when you're weak. Aren't you thankful for that? Number three, the Holy Spirit will empower you to have hope in a hopeless world. Romans chapter 15, verse 13 it says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our hope is not found by watching CNN. Our hope is not found by watching Fox News. As we go into campaign seasoning seasons, let me tell you, our hope is not gonna be found in campaign speeches or campaign commercials. Lord, our hope lies in the hands of our creator, God. That's where our hope is. He is our hope. And it's a hope that can absolutely overflow out of us to the people all around us. People know people that are walking 
with the eyes of hope. And they're living with the hands of hope. Something on this Convoy of Hope cruise that we went on. We heard the testimony of Hal Donaldson. He was the founder of Convoy of Hope. When Hal was eight years old, he was either eight or 10, he was at a babysitter's house with his siblings. The police come and they tell the babysitter that your mother has been severely injured and your dad has been killed. So there was a family that took them into their double wide trailer. They lived poor. Eventually they were able to get out on their own, but they lived with government assistance, government cheese, food stamps. Many times he had tore shoes. Oftentimes he didn't have shoes at all. But in that little boy, he relied on the power of the Holy Spirit that dwelled within him. And in his heart that was broken, in his heart what was weak, in the moments where he felt all alone, God put something in that little boy's heart of I'm gonna make a difference and I'm gonna bring hope to people that have no hope. That ministry now, last year, we partnered with them. We donated over $100,000 to this ministry today, last year. They had 77 natural disasters that they had dozens and dozens of 18 wheelers that were there the next day giving food, giving water, giving blankets, giving hope, giving prayers, giving Jesus. And the people that are struggling that had no hope, this little boy, because of the vision that empowered him to do what he could do one step at a time, one step at a time, now they are now feeding over 250,000 of the poorest children around the world every single day. Well, I can't do that, Pastor Lynn, but what you can do is the one thing that the Holy Spirit's telling you to do. It wasn't in a day that Hal Donaldson had a ministry that's impacting millions and millions of people. They were able to give out over $500 million worth of food to the world last year. And it's all in the name of Jesus. And Hal's gonna be the first one to tell him, when you look at him, he's a meek guy. He's a, a quiet guy. But let me tell you, that man's walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, and he's anointed by God for such a time as this, just as each and every one of you are anointed by God for such a time as this. Amen? Number four, the power of the Holy Spirit for us is to experience all of the fullness of God. So many Christians today, they have a reduced value of Christianity. Well, Christianity, yeah, church is part of my life. God, yeah, God's in his little box. So, you know, I, I see him on Sunday for half an hour. Pastor Glenn, you better be good for that half an hour because that's all I'm getting for the week or the month. Let me tell you, it's not about having a social media account with a Bible verse as your theme. It's about walking in the fullness of who God is. Christianity is not a hobby. Being a follower of Jesus Christ is not a hobby. It's everything. It's eternity. To think of the scope of eternal life versus eternal separation from God, it's a big deal. And so many people are like, I don't wanna step any toes. Guess what, church? It's time to step on some toes for the case of Jesus Christ. See, in America, 67% of Americans called themselves Christians. Can you believe that? 67, you probably go to your neighbors and you're like, man, it's like 10%. In this survey, 67% of Americans call themselves Christians. But of that 67%, less than 20% believe that the Bible is truly the word of God. So we live in a nation that does not believe that the Bible is the word of God. But let me tell you, when you're a Christ follower, walking hand in hand with the Spirit, our lives are not gonna look like the rest of the world. When you look around people that are filled with worry, maybe struggling in their marriage, bound to sins, are still battling addiction, Listen, that's what the world has to offer, all of those things. But when we walk with Jesus Christ in the power of his spirit, we are able to overcome. We're able to unify. We're able to come together. And we're able to overcome addictions. We're overcome the chains and bondages of sin because there's that power that's inside of us to break the chains. Can you say amen to that? In Ephesians chapter three, the apostle Paul he said a prayer over the church of Ephesus 
And I want to say this prayer over our church today. It's a prayer that's powerful. It's a prayer that's meaningful. And I believe that this prayer is for us today. Can we all just bow our heads as I pray this prayer from Ephesians chapter 3, starting in verse 16. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell within your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all saints, to grasp how wide, how long, how high and deep the love of Christ is. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you receive that prayer today? That's the prayer that the apostle prayed over the church then, and it's a prayer that is so meaningful for us now. So many people, they go, is this all that Christianity has to offer? Is this it? Just this church thing? Just this small group thing? Is there more? Let me give you a clear answer. Yes. There is more. The reality of being in a constant presence with God through the Holy Spirit, that when you're walking with the Spirit and you begin to exhibit exhibit the fruits that the Spirit has when the Spirit's in you, there are fruits that naturally are gonna come out. The fruit of love in a world that's so loveless. The fruit of joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. God has given us gifts from the Holy Spirit, but it's up to us to tap into those those gifts, tap into the power. Maybe you say, well, I don't really have joy. I'm not really feeling peace right now. You know what I've heard someone say one time was, well, then maybe your fruit is spoiling. Maybe you need to go back to your first love. Maybe you need to look at your life and how you're living your life on a day in and day day out basis and see how you can change some things very intentionally so that you are tapped into the power source that's gonna give you all of that fruit. Healthy fruit. Healthy fruit that's not gonna spoil, it's not gonna get old. Many of you, the last thing that you do before you go to bed at night. Now there's a couple of you, I know you're really spiritual, I'm really proud of you. You pray, last thing. But most of us, what do we do? We plug in our cell phone. Right before we go to bed, I do it. I'm like, good night, babe, love ya. I'll see you in the morning. Boom, pop that thing in. Now, why are we plugging our cell phone into electricity? It's because if we don't, the next day our phone is going to die. It will not have had the power injected into it. So no longer are we gonna be able to talk to people on the phone, text people. We're not gonna be able to Google everything that we want the answer immediately for. That's all over because the power source was not plugged into our cell phone. You see, the same thing with our life. We wonder, why am I not experiencing joy? Why am I not experiencing peace? Why am I impatient all the time? Why am I overwhelmed? Let me ask you, are you plugging in to the power source? Are you plugging in every single, not Sunday, Sunday's a great one, that's easy. But every single day, are you plugging into the power source so that you are hand in hand with the Holy Spirit? So how do we stay connected with the Holy Spirit? Number one, set your mind on God and godly things. Don't focus, it's easy. The enemy wants to throw distractions and things to cause us to stumble, cause us to to fear. We need to look at those struggles and know that those are temporary and begin to pray and believe and have faith that God's bigger than our struggles, amen? Keep your eyes fixed on the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the one who holds tomorrow. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. If you go to bed every single night knowing, because he lives, I can, come on tomorrow, let's go. When you're plugged into the power source, that's what happens, you see? The daily choice that we need to be in pursuing God is we need to pray. Not just for our food. We need to pray. We need to pray for each other. We need to pray for our nation. Here we are celebrating the 4th of July. Our nation is more divided than it's ever been in our history. But this nation was founded as one nation under God. 
indivisible with liberty and justice for all. We need to pray and seek the face of God and pray for unity and pray God's grace on this nation. Humble ourselves that our nation would repent for their sins and that God would truly heal this land. Pray. Read God's word. Get the Bible app, New Version Bible app. Read it. If there's versions that you may not understand, there's versions that you will understand. Read it. Hunger for it. When the enemy comes into your mind and tries to attack you, the Bible says that we could take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. When that thing says you can't, and that fear comes into your head and your heart, when those things that are overwhelming, you stop and you say, I take that thought captive in Jesus' name. I am an overcomer by the word of my testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. We need to worship. We need to worship our God. We need to thank him and have gratitude. And we need to turn from the way we were before Christ and move to where God is taking each and every one of us. Church, the Holy Spirit's real. The Holy Spirit's powerful. And the Holy Spirit dwells inside of each one of us. Tap in to the, how, the, the power of the Holy Spirit every day. Can you say amen? Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes as we close today. Lord, we love you so much. You're so good. You're so good. You're so faithful. I just pray, God, that each and every person in this room, those that are struggling, those that are on mountaintops, those that are in valleys, God, no matter where we are, you're right there with us. And your spirit dwells inside of us to encourage us, to comfort us, to counsel us, to convict us, to motivate us, to have power, to overcome. I pray, God, that each and every person in this room would tap into that power source like they've never tapped in before. With every head bowed and every eye closed, maybe you're here today. You say, Pastor Glenn, wow, that sounds overwhelming. It is overwhelming. God's grace is, is overwhelming. To understand that the gift of the Holy Spirit inside of each one of us, it's overwhelming. But it's a gift that comes by grace through faith in trusting and believing God and giving our hearts to him. He went to the cross for each and every single one of us. He bore the price for your sin and my sin on that cross. So today, with every head bowed, every eye closed, maybe you're here and you say, Pastor Glenn, I wanna know him. I want to love him. I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I want to be infused and filled up and submersed with the Holy Spirit inside of me. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. It doesn't say tomorrow. It says today. So if you're here today, you say, Pastor Glenn, I want it. I believe it. And today's my day. When I count to three, I want you just to slip up your hand. I'm not going to call you out, but I believe that God is going to move in your heart and you will not be the same when you leave this place today through the power of the Holy Spirit. If that's you, just raise your hand when I count to three. One, two, three. Yes, raise it up high. You're in church, man. We're all praying. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Praise God. Yes, yes. I see your hand. Yours and yours and yours and yours and yours and yours and yours. Yours and yours. Whew. You know, we, we, we pray for revival. We pray for revival. I believe we're in the middle of revival right now. I do. So will you pray with me for the sake of all those that raise their hand? Let's all pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your Holy Spirit that dwells inside of me. I thank you that you went to the cross and gave your life so that I might have life. Today, I ask you to forgive me of my sins, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, I make you today my Lord, my Savior, my God, and truly my best friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give the Lord a great praise offering that he's worthy of today? Enjoy your families this 4th of July. Be careful with the fireworks. Don't blow off your hands. Don't let fireworks after 9.30 at night for us old people. I love you, church. Have a wonderful week. Thank you so much, Pastor Glenn. Amazing message. Would you stand with me now to receive your blessing? And as the altar prayer team comes to the front, I want to encourage you that as soon as we say this blessing, that 
If you would like prayer for any reason, please come see one of the altar prayer team members. And if you raised your hand and prayed that prayer for the first time, we have a book that we want to give you called A Fresh Start with God. It's a gift to you. But to receive your blessing now, if you just open your hearts to the Lord, maybe turn your palms upward, just in an attitude of receiving. May the Lord bless you, the peace that comes with knowing him. May the Lord bless you with every fruit of the Spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We love you, church. Happy Independence Day.